Welcome back everyone. I am Dr. Rupa Wong, ophthalmologist, and today we're going to be talking about dry eyes. Yes, dry eyes, because you know what? It predominantly affects women and it's really a pain, especially if you like wearing makeup and wearing colored contact lenses and all of this great stuff that I love to do. So if you're interested in learning more, keep watching. So if you have stumbled across this video, it's more than likely because you've been experiencing some symptoms of dry eyes. So what does dry eyes feel like? It usually causes redness, irritation, burning, stinging, feel like something's in your eyes, like sand in your eyes. We call it foreign body sensation. And sometimes it even causes tearing, which is what always throws my patients for a loop because they are like, how can my eyes be dry? when I literally have tears just pouring out and they're like running down my cheek. And the reason your eyes can be dry and you have tearing is because the tears are an attempt by your body to try to lubricate the surface of your eye. But the tears that they're making are just not as good, these reflex tears, just not as good as your basal tears. And so they evaporate more quickly and they're just not as helpful and your body keeps making them and you know, there's the cycle. So who's at risk? women in their 50s, smokers, those are people that are going to experience dry eyes. All those medical problems are on those medications, wearing contact lenses, those are all risk factors for developing dry eyes. The other thing is it does affect women more than men. It affects women of a certain age more than men. So no shame in that, I'm 44 and I can definitely tell that my eyes have become drier with age. And, you know, women are the ones that are also wearing makeup and doing tight lining and doing lash extensions and a lot of other things that can exacerbate dry eyes. So I figured let's do a video on dry eyes and talk about all the different causes. So some of them you might be able to improve dry eyes. You can either make insufficient tears or your tears might evaporate too quickly. So two different reasons to have dry eyes. So if you're not making enough tears, why does that happen to you? First, there's a ton of different medical problems that can cause insufficient tear production, especially rheumatologic diseases. Those are notorious, like Sjogren's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, neurologic conditions like Parkinson's disease can do so, allergic eye disease, sarcoidosis, and thyroid eye disease. And that's a specialty of mine because you might not know this, but I'm an eye muscle or strabismus surgeon, so I operate on the eye muscles, and thyroid patients get a lot of eye muscle abnormalities, basically because if you have Graves' disease, it attacks the muscles of the eye and it pushes the eyes forward. And it gives patients with thyroid conditions, certain thyroid conditions, especially if they're hyperthyroid, they've got too much thyroid hormone, it gives them what's called a, a thyroid stare. So you can see the sclera, the white of the eye on the top and bottom. So what does that mean? It means their eyes are more exposed and then your tears just don't work as well. So there's a lot of different components to why Graves' disease or thyroid patients have really, really dry eyes. So medical problems, that's a big one. Medications, there's a lot of different medications that can cause dry eyes. Your oral contraceptive pill, antidepressants, your antihypertensive medications, all the medications you take for your allergies, like me, your decongestants, you know, everything that dries you up your sinuses and your runny nose, it's gonna dry your eyes up too. And again, allergic eyes and dry eyes kind of go hand in hand. Not always, but a lot of the time. Parkinson's medication is, is a big one as well. And then a big one is acne medication. Again, makes sense. You're trying to decrease oil production in your skin but you also end up decreasing oil production in your eyelids. So let's just talk about your tear film, your tears. It's, your tears are not just made up of water. They're actually made up of three different layers. They're made up of water, which is the aqueous layer. They're made up of a mucin layer, and they're made up of a fatty oily layer. So all of those three layers are really, really important for having a good healthy tear film. And a healthy tear film is really important for seeing well. So if you don't have good 
tears and you have a lot of dry eyes, it can actually affect your vision. It can cause blurry vision. In addition to that, all that stuff I was talking about before, like redness and stinging and, and all of that and irritation can also affect your vision, which a lot of people don't know. Another cause for decreased tear production is damage to the corneal nerve. So your cornea is the clear dome shaped covering, which sits on the front surface of the eye and damage to those nerves can, de can cause a lot of dry eye problems. So how do you get damage to those nerves? Typically surgery, LASIK surgery, cataract surgery. Those are your two big culprits. So if you've gotten evaluated for LASIK surgery and they found that you had a really bad dry eyes, then they tell you that you're not a candidate for LASIK because they don't wanna make your dry eyes worse. Another thing is contact lens wears, just all that trauma to the eye, inserting or removing the contact lens can sometimes damage the corneal nerves and it worsens dry eye syndromes. So that's just a real quick snapshot of things that cause a decreased tear production. But the other component is what if you make good tears, but your tears just evaporate too quickly? Because remember I told you tears are made up of water and oil and fat. So what if your tears evaporate quickly? The oily and fatty layer are what's really important at preventing your tears from evaporating. So what could cause that to happen? You know, you really need very healthy meibomian glands. Those are those little glands near the eyelashes. They make the oil for your tear layer. You need healthy meibomian glands for your tears to stick around for a long time. There are a couple of conditions that decrease your blink rate. And that's really, essential for preventing dry eyes, not just because it lubricates the surface of the eye. When you blink, you're not just closing your eyelid and putting tears there. It actually squeezes the muscles around the meibomian glands and gets them to push out a droplet of oil into your tear film. And like I said, that, that droplet of oil is really important, keeping your tears sticking around on the surface of your eyes. So if you don't blink as much, then that nice and necessary droplet of oil doesn't get put back onto the front surface of the eye. So why would you not blink as much? If you're on your device a lot, when people are, are on a device or even reading, but much more so screen time, their blink rate decreases versus when you're just talking to somebody. It decreases sometimes by, by about two thirds. And that's really, really huge. Also contact lens wearers, they tend not to blink quite as much as well. So. There's a lot of things that can cause your meibomian glands to not be functioning at optimal levels. And so if your meibomian glands don't get that oil in the tear film, then what happens is they get kind of stagnant right there. The oil gets kind of stuck and it turns into a thicker consistency. So it's not nice and lubricating like olive oil because it's being repeatedly turned over. It kind of gets stuck and they clog the pores causing meibomitis or also called blepharitis. And so that's why those, if you've been told that you have inflammation of your eyelids or blepharitis, that's why that causes dry eyes because it's blocking your oil glands. Other things, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a fan. You can see it in the mirror there. I have a fan in my bedroom. A fan is going to dry the surface of your eyes out. It's also why lash extensions, fake lashes, all of that sometimes can act like little fans on your, on your eyelids. I'm serious. And it forces air to the front surface and it can dry your eyes out faster. So if you've noticed that before, when you get really long extensions put on or you're wearing really long, you know, falsies, you might want to cut back a little bit on the length so they're not so much fan like And then another thing is preservatives and eye drops. So sometimes people come to me and they are on tons of different eye drops and they don't feel any better. And what we got to do is peel it all back because they're, you know, eye drops are not benign. There's sometimes there's a lot of preservatives in your eye drops that the preservatives can be causing damage. So we really sometimes have to go back to like preservative free artificial tears and then build from there. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment below. I, let me know what content you wanna see. I'm happy to produce it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa, mahalo.